she should resign immediately or the governor should fire her immediately. We begin tonight with crisis in the classroom and more controversy involving State Education Commissioner Lizette Reynolds. Fox 17 News has confirmed Reynolds signed forms certifying she had been a state employee for more than six months to qualify for a college tuition waiver. Problem is she hasn't been on the state payroll that long. Fox 17 News Caitlin Miller now live downtown at the state capitol with more on what the, the commissioner's office is calling an administrative error. Yes, Scott. Well, some people are outraged because they say that Commissioner Reynolds is not even qualified for this position under state law. And now they're even more outraged because she's taking money that she's not even eligible for. State Representative John Ray Clemens says the first issue is Commissioner Lizette Reynolds is unqualified for her position under state law. One of the biggest reasons, he says, she's not qualified to teach in Tennessee. And what signal does this send that the governor's willing to hire somebody who's completely unqualified, who would misrepresent something on a state application and, and seek a tuition waiver from a state university just to get on the job training? This is all completely humiliating. Fox 17 News reached out to Commissioner Reynolds to get her side on this matter, but she has not responded yet. Fox 17 News then reached out to the Tennessee Department of Education and they claim it was an administrative error and Commissioner Reynolds personally covered the cost of all classes upon realizing the mistake. We followed up to this email asking how this was an administrative error and the department responded it was an unfortunate error. It's her signature. Hopefully she read the form if she's going to be a commissioner of education and knew she was lying when she did it. Paying the money back doesn't resolve the issue of the fact that she lied and committed perjury. On the public higher education fee waiver, you can see Commissioner Reynolds sign this document on August 11th of 2023. The Tennessee Department of Education says that Commissioner Reynolds is focused on the work moving forward within the department, but other people are saying that the attorney general should prosecute her. Reporting live from the state capitol, I'm Caitlin Miller, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Caitlin, thank you. Crisis in the Classroom is our ongoing commitment to our viewers to expose problems in our schools at all levels and to look for solutions. If you have a story you'd like to see us cover, tell us about it in an email. Send that to news at fox17.com or you can phone our tip line. You see the number on your screen, 615-266-4149. And a major traffic alert that we want you to be aware of this weekend. It involves uh, the section of the map you see right here, Interstate 40, I-65, the interchange downtown on the west side. You uh, see the area we're talking about there highlighted in that circle, and uh, this is a larger example of uh, that. TDOT will be closing the I-65 uh, ramp right here. This is the downtown area in this neck of the woods, and as you head out west, of course, you come up and jump on this uh, flyover to get on 40. It's going to be closed this weekend uh, and crews will be working trying to upgrade the railing and do several other repairs as part of this process. And know this, TDOT expects to close this very same section of interstate next weekend as well. In health news tonight, the Tennessee Department of Health is investigating cases of a botulism-like illness following cosmetic injections. At least four people here in Tennessee had symptoms. All of them report receiving botulinum toxin injections for cosmetic purposes. Two of those people had to be hospitalized. If you think you may have been impacted, call the Tennessee Department of Health. In Operation Crime and Justice, Murfreesboro police are asking for your assistance tonight, finding two people who may have stolen a trailer. Take a look. This is surveillance video from the secure storage rooms on Las Casas Pike on March 24th. You see a couple of men in a dark Chevy pickup truck driving into the area, and then they will hook up a trailer to their truck. The trailer had a large black sticker on it with the words that said unique interiors, both on the rear and on the sides. These individuals are what police Police are calling persons of interest in another theft at this same business the very same day. If you recognize the vehicle or the people in this image, call Murfreesboro Police. 
Well, it's your money and our partners at the government watchdog group OpenTheBooks.com found that Metro government spent nearly $2 million last year on employee travel. It's not an unusual amount for a city this size, but as they say, the devil's in the details. Open the Books looked at the records and they show that taxpayers covered $1,000 for Metro Councilman Sean Parker to attend a Democratic Socialists of America conference. And perhaps more disturbing, thousands more in employee travel is on the books, but there are very, if any, very few, I should say, if any records to explain what it is. Um, the furthest travel appears to be uh, to San Juan, Puerto Rico. And so the concern here is that uh, Metro gave very vague details in about half of these travel expenses. We don't know who traveled. It doesn't say which employee. Only some records give details about where the person traveled or for what purpose. Now contrast that with Metro Schools, which spent about $3 million on employee travel last year, but they provided full documentation. Open the Books reached out to the Councilman Sean Parker to ask about that Democratic Socialist event. So far, he has not responded. All right, let's talk about your weather. It's been cooler the last couple of days, but uh, as we head into the weekend, warmer. Yes, Scott, today was, today was just cold, kind of. I'll call it compared to those 80 degree temperature days that we did have. But like you said, we are going to warm up as we head on into the rest of the weekend. Sunday is going to be warmer than Saturday, but Sunday we do bring in a chance for some showers, a few thunderstorms. Saturday, I think we get plenty of sunshine and stay dry. So overall, not too bad for us at all on Saturday. Before that, though, tonight, very early tomorrow morning, frost advisories in effect for all of our viewing area, all of Middle Tennessee, all of Southern Kentucky, all the counties that we cover. Frost advisories uh, for these temperatures dropping down to 31 to 36 degrees so it is going to be chilly tonight and we could very well see some more patchy frost develop tonight so if you have any sensitive outdoor plants that you just planted or anything like that just go ahead and protect them before you go to bed tonight to keep them safe for any of that frost for the morning 47 degrees right here in Nashville we are still cloudy and I think we're going to hold on to some more of those clouds as we head through the rest of the night too as far as radar goes really not showing anything for us in middle Tennessee or southern Kentucky right now here's you a zoomed in view it is all dry on the radar map right Right now, current temperatures are pretty chilly too. We have these in the 40s. We're at 44 in Dixon, some upper 40s out west, 49 Camden, 48 in Linden, lower 40s a little bit further to the south and east, 41 Tullahoma, 42 right now, Crossville also into Cookville. As we head on into tonight, again, that frost advisory is in place. Showers and thunderstorms are going to get more widespread for the middle part of the week. We'll also talk about Monday and the eclipse viewing forecast. All those details coming up for you here in just a bit. Earthquake shook the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor today. Take a look for yourself. America's iconic lady shaking back and forth during this morning's magnitude 4.8 earthquake. It was centered very close to New York City. Whole lot of shaking going on there. As you can imagine, it startled several people who were at home when the tremor hit. My uh, glasses in the hutch were shaking and I knew that something was wrong and my dog looked at me like, what did you do? And I thought the house was going to blow up. I really did. Well, despite the size of the quake, there are no reported injuries. And toward uh, that end, coming up next, Fox 17, Code Red Chief Meteorologist Katie Morgan will be talking with an expert from the USGS about the science behind this earthquake. Still hungry for seconds? We got you for just one buck. Buy a McDouble, McChicken, or small fries and get another one for only $1. Well, this morning, folks in the Northeast got quite a shock as a 4.8 magnitude earthquake rocked the area. Cameras in several homes captured video, video of the shaking. The epicenter located near White House Station, New Jersey, just outside of New York City. The quake was strong enough to be felt in several states, including New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. The map shows how strong the vibrations were in that area. Joining us now to talk more about this is Dr. Bill Barnhart. He's the assistant coordinator of the Earthquake Hazards Program at the USGS, or the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, Dr. Barnhart, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, first let's uh, start with, of course, the, the 4.8. What is that as far as uh, strength goes? How, how much would you feel one? Well, if you're standing right on top of this earthquake, you've got quite a jolt this morning. A uh, 4.8 earthquake is, is certainly not one of the larger earthquakes you could get, but for an earthquake on the East Coast, it's a pretty decent size and certainly one 
that doesn't necessarily cause a lot of damage. Uh, we, we actually have not heard of many, if any, reports of damage so far. Uh, but one that could be very, very broadly felt. As you mentioned, uh, this earthquake was felt from as far south as Virginia to as far north as Maine, which is a, a massive distance with tens of millions of people yeah. who would have felt that shaking. Yeah, and again, in a very populated area. So I'm sure you're getting several reports. How rare is an earthquake in the Northeast? We don't tend to hear about them as much. Yeah, East Coast earthquakes are interesting. They they are infrequent, but they do happen. Many people might recall that in 2011, there was a magnitude 5.8 earthquake in central Virginia that, that damaged the Washington Monument and the National Cathedral. This is one of the larger earthquakes since that earthquake in 2011 that happened on the East Coast. Uh, but certainly, earthquakes of sort of this moderate size can happen uh, and, and people can feel them. And it's important that even if you don't live in earthquake country, so if you don't live in California, that you know what to do if there is an earthquake, because they could really happen anywhere on the East Coast. And what what we try to communicate to people is that if you feel one, you should remember to drop cover and hold on, which means to get down under a table or a desk, uh, hold on to it and protect yourself from things that might fall off the walls or the ceiling. Yeah, and uh, lastly, quickly here, uh, does topography play a difference either on the surface or below the surface more so with these earthquakes, East Coast versus West Coast, or even here in the, in the central part of the country? Yeah, absolutely. So earthquakes in the central and eastern United States tend to be felt over much larger distances than when you go out west, and that's largely based on the geology and the topography. Seismic waves are just able to move much more efficiently in the eastern United States. So people feel these events over much larger distances than, than you would for the same sized earthquake in California. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, Dr. Bill Barnhart with the USGS. Thank you again. Yes, thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, Katie. Love that. Well, we want to know what you think. Have you ever experienced an earthquake? 503 votes coming in and really almost 50 50 here. 51.1% say no, 48.9% say yes. If you'd like to weigh in, let us know what you think. Take your smartphone, scan the QR code there on the right hand side of your screen. It will link you to our X poll and we will update the results later in the broadcast. Shifting gears now, Monday's eclipse will be the longest, most visible solar eclipse in more than a century. But watching this without proper eye protection could cause permanent vision loss. Fox 17 News' Caitlin Miller tonight talking with an ophthalmologist about what you can do right now to protect your eyes next week. Remember the total solar eclipse in 2017? Well, the one coming up on April 8th will be longer and the last to be visible from the continental U.S. until the year 2044. Just like the last one, protecting your eyes is critical. It is not enough just to wear regular old sunglasses for these eclipses. Ophthalmologist Dr. Nicole Bayich with Cleveland Clinic says looking at a solar eclipse without proper eye protection can lead to solar retinopathy. That's damage to your retina. It can cause blind spots in vision and decreased vision. Depending on the extent of damage, it can be temporary or permanent. So you need to wear proper eclipse glasses with the solar filter ISO 12312-2. You'll find that printed on the inside of the eclipse glasses. Unfortunately, there are counterfeit glasses out there. Before buying a pair, NASA recommends checking the American Astronomical Society's list of approved solar viewers, making sure the seller is listed on the website. After buying glasses, check them. There should be no scratches or tears. And if looking at the eclipse through binoculars, a camera or telescope, a certified solar filter on the front of the instrument is needed to protect eyes. And it's not enough to just put, you know, eclipse glasses over. And in fact, that's actually dangerous because if you put eclipse glasses over a telescope or you know, some other device, you can actually burn a hole through the glasses and lead to direct injury. Caitlin Miller, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. For a list of approved safety glasses, go to our website, fox17.com, and click on Fox Links. There are also other ways to safely view the solar eclipse without directly looking at the sun. NASA has a video on how to make a pinhole projector on its website. All you need is a cardboard box, plus scissors, aluminum foil, a pencil, a push pen, some tape, and a white piece of paper. The video will take you through the steps to make it. 
and also show you how to use it. We have a link to that video on our website, fox17.com. And on Monday, we will bring you a 30-minute solar eclipse special from 1.45 to 2.15 on our website. Fox 17 Chief Code Red Meteorologist Katie Morgan will be on the uh, move up in Marion, Illinois, in the path of totality, sharing some cool science facts live in real time while the eclipse is happening. That's not all, though. You can see total coverage of the eclipse from Texas all the way up to the northeast in Maine, starting at noon and continuing until 3 p.m. And this is all on our website, fox17.com. And that means if you're out, just use your phone. And uh, what we need uh, Mother Nature to do is to cooperate. Scott, I really hope it does. And I really hope it does for everybody in the path of totality because it's something so cool to see, but if the clouds are there, you can't even see nothing. So it's like, I don't know. It's just not Fingers a good thing. crossed. I'm really hoping some of those clouds start to clear on out for us. And uh, there might be some clearing for some areas, but here in Middle Tennessee right now, I do think it's looking kind of cloudy. We may see some breaks the further northwest in the viewing area that you go kind of up there around the Tennessee River, but definitely keeping our eye out for that, hoping for some good viewing of the total solar eclipse over there in the path of totality. This is a partial solar eclipse for us, not going to see full coverage. Right now, though, we're going to be talking about cold air again for tonight. Frost advisory is still in effect. I wanted to show you this map again because if any of y'all do have any of those sensitive plants that you may have recently put outside, you might want to protect some of them, though. Just make sure you uh, be, safe, be on the safe side with those tonight because we could see some frost develop across most of the area. 47 degrees right here in Nashville. A big crowd out there on Broadway, too, this Friday night. Overall, no bad weather, though. It's just going to be cold with the chance for frost. No storms or nothing that we'll have to worry about for the rest of the night. So overall, pretty good for us. Just chilly. Southern Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, it is all dry right now, and we're going to stay that way for the rest of the night. We're going to start out tomorrow on the dry side, too. Also, plenty of sunshine for us as we head through tomorrow. Future track not picking up on really much cloud cover at all for us or rainfall through Saturday. And then once we head on into Sunday, Sunday morning, we're going to be off to a dry start Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, things will change up a little bit for us. You'll see these showers. A few thunderstorms are going to try to roll in very scattered, some spotty activity as we head through Sunday afternoon into the evening hours. Overall, not expecting anything big really at all for Sunday, except maybe a couple of those storms that try to get a little bit on the strong side. Storm Prediction Center does have about half of us in that shade of green, that level one risk for some of those storms on a Sunday. Maybe a couple of strong storms try to develop. I don't think we're going to have to worry about any tornado threat for Sunday. Maybe a couple of those storms, though, could try to produce a few strong wind gusts. Once we head on into Monday, this is the day of the eclipse. We could still see some showers for the morning hours. I think we get a little bit of a break in the rain for part of the afternoon. Hopefully those clouds will break out a little bit better, too. And then as we head on into Tuesday, still some more showers and thunderstorms expected. It should get more wide spread for us throughout the morning and early afternoon on Tuesday off and on throughout the rest of the afternoon Tuesday and then Wednesday is just more of the same more kind of more showers and thunderstorms continuing across the area for Wednesday and then we'll keep that similar setup as we head on into Thursday as well. Now this model is showing us starting out Thursday fairly dry but bringing in that rain chance a little bit later on in the day but uh, I do think there's still that pretty good rain chance for us on Thursday. The good news though with all these rounds of weather moving through I don't think we're really going to have to worry about much of a severe threat. This is for Monday that's going to stay to the southwest of us. This map is for Tuesday. That uh, severe threat still staying in the parts of East Texas over into West Louisiana as well. Wednesday, it moves a little bit further to the east, but I still think the bulk of this better ingredients of the severe threat are going to be staying to the south and southwest of us here in Middle Tennessee. For tonight, 36 degrees. That patchy frost will be possible. Tomorrow, we are going to warm up a little bit better. I'll show you that seven-day forecast coming up here in just a bit. I'm Janae Bones in Washington with a look at rising grocery prices. Hey there, I'm Jennifer Waddell from the Fox 17 News Morning Show. Gen Z going back to basics. More students are now choosing to skip. I'm an attorney helping my fellow Marines and their families get the compensation they deserve. To see if you qualify, call me now at 1-800-844-1712. In the economy tonight, food prices continue to soar, forcing many Americans to dig deeper just to put food on the table, even if it's fast food. Fox 17 News' Janae Bowens has more on what's driving prices. And be sure to scan the QR code that will appear on your screen during the story to let us know what you think. 
The struggle is real for Americans who have been experiencing rising grocery prices for years. Everything has gotten more and more and more expensive. My gosh, do I have a coupon? <laughs> a new report from the Wall Street Journal shows $100 at the grocery store just doesn't go as far as it did five years ago. Today, that same grocery list costs 36.5% more. Food prices, like any sort of basic necessity, um, are going to disproportionately affect poorer consumers because they have fewer dollars to spend. Items like beef, fruit snacks, and mayonnaise are more than 50% more expensive than back in 2019. And consumers are also feeling the pinch eating out. There was a time when a trip to Olive Garden was affordable. The restaurant's parent company reported much lower sales among Americans who make below $75,000. When it comes to uh, the grocery store, when it comes to going to, out to eat, um, if you see a 20, 30 percent increase in those prices and you're uh, on the lower end of the income scale, well, you're going to scale back or not go at all. And as the Daily Mail points out, McDonald's prices have doubled in 10 years. Back in 2014, a 10-piece McNugget meal was just $5.99. Today, you're going to have to pay $10.99. And if the shake machine is working, you'll pay $4.49 for an Oreo McFlurry. Ten years ago, it was just $2.39. We certainly have seen uh, the rate of price increases slow, if not stop, in the last few months. That's good news. The bad news is that they're stopping at a very high level relative to just 2019. New inflation numbers are coming out next week. The Biden administration and economists are boasting of cooling inflation in recent months, but to the average American, prices are still higher than pre-pandemic. I'm Janae Bowens reporting. During our story, we had a QR code linking you to a poll asking whether inflation is changing your spending habits. 324 people weighed in. Look at that. 87.3% say yes, it is changing our habits. A little under 13% say no. Our thanks to all who took a moment to weigh in. Just ahead, Finding the Good Fight, the latest on a state lawmaker's efforts to close a loophole that allowed a mentally ill man to escape justice. I'm Kelly. Visit brownspressurewashington.com and click on Wash a Widow's House. This Fox 17 This Morning newscast is sponsored by Electronic Express. We make it happen. Looking ahead to Sunday and a prayer vigil for the victims of the mass shooting Easter Sunday last week at a North Nashville Bistro. Metro police say this man, Anton Rucker, shot six people at a restaurant called Roasted on Garfield Street. Marine Corps veteran Alan Beecham of Alabama was killed in that shooting. The vigil happens at 3 p.m. this Sunday. Along with prayers, organizers will be sharing prepared statements from local leaders. Really praying that this time justice will be served. Tonight in Operation Crime and Justice, the parents of a Belmont University student killed by a stray bullet last year worry their daughter will never get justice. The man Metro Police say pulled the trigger in this case was on the street after being found incompetent to stand trial six months earlier in a previous aggravated assault case. Fox 17 News Kylie Walker downtown now with more on a bill moving forward in the legislature to close that loophole. Shaquille Taylor is no stranger to the justice system. Now next month, he has a competency hearing in the murder of Jillian Ludwig. Keep in mind, state lawmakers are now working to close any loopholes that would let him and others go free. Last April, Shaquille Taylor was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, but he was released from custody after three court appointed doctors found him incompetent to stand trial. He also did not meet the standards for involuntary commitment to a mental health facility. He should not have been on the streets when he was able to shoot Jillian. In November, Metro Police say a stray bullet fired by Taylor hit Jessica Ludwig's daughter, Jillian. We've learned a lot about the man and seems that in, in many other respects of his daily life, he's competent to have a job, have a girlfriend, have an apartment, you know, drive a car, load a gun, shoot a gun. We feel that um, that the case needs to be made for his competence. So this does go to trial and we do get justice. Charles Davis, a judge of more than 30 years, now a law professor at Trevecca University, says this is a complicated process. The lack of capacity is a person being unable to either understand the proceedings or unable to understand 
their circumstances such that they can even assist their attorney in preparing an adequate defense for them. David says in most cases, a medical professional will make that decision and take the evidence to the court. But now Tennessee lawmakers are working to close a gap in state laws. Jillian's law would require incompetent felony defendants be committed to a mental health facility. If someone is not competent to assist in their own defense, they're, they're, they're too far gone to even talk to their lawyer about their case, then they won't leave the jail, they won't leave the courtroom, they will go to an inpatient treatment facility until which time they are competent. This bill has overwhelming bipartisan support and would be funded by the governor's budget. It'll go before the House on April 15th. On Tuesday this week, Taylor was in court virtually and that's when his competency hearing was scheduled for May 1st. Keep in mind we'll have any updates when the time comes. For now, reporting in Nashville, Kylie Walker, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. New tonight, Rutherford County has more than a dozen new fire and rescue workers tonight. This is good news. 16 men graduating from the training academy. They are now full time fire department employees and uh, these are pictures from some of the training. They spent 600 hours in the classroom and beyond that survived rigorous physical training outdoors that included how to make a forcible entry, dealing with hazmat situations and extrication issues along with live burns. To see more pictures of training like this, check out the Rutherford County County Fire and Rescue page on Facebook. Earlier in the newscast, we told you about our daily X poll asking if you have ever experienced an earthquake. Of course, what happened along the East Coast prompted the question. 520 people have weighed in and uh, the numbers are pretty even. 49.6% say yes, we have felt one and 50.4% uh, say no. We'll have another update on these numbers for you tonight on Fox 17 News at 10. In Election 24, continued questions tonight about whether China is trying to influence American voters in the upcoming presidential race. Fox 17 News' Kayla Gaskins tells us about a new report by Microsoft's Threat Analysis Center that has some experts concerned. Allegations of foreign governments attempting to influence U.S. presidential elections are nothing new. How Russia targeted voting systems in all 50 states. This time, China is the one accused of planning to meddle. And where they looked at what the Russians are alleged to have done, and they're envious. So they've been studying how to be more effective in influence campaigns. And frankly, they've gotten a lot better in the last few years. So this is something we should worry about. A new report by Microsoft's Threat Analysis Center notes Chinese affiliated online accounts have started posting exclusively about divisive U.S. political issues, such as immigration and race, posing as English speaking Americans. These posts often include polling questions meant to gauge how Americans feel about hot button issues. Echoing similar concerns raised by U.S. intelligence agencies. Chinese leadership really doesn't like democracy. And anything that undercuts the narrative that democracy is good is useful to them. They want to show that American democracy doesn't work. Microsoft's team believes the Chinese government is behind these posts aiming to gather information they can use to influence November's election in whatever way they feel will be most favorable to China's interests. The Chinese realized years ago they could take advantage of the First Amendment. So they can put their message out in the U.S. in a way that we cannot put our message out in China. Microsoft also accusing Beijing of increasing its use of AI to spread conspiracy theories about the U.S., like that the U.S. is responsible for starting the devastating Maui wildfires with a weather weapon. China has denied trying to influence U.S. elections. During a meeting in November, China's leader Xi Jinping promised President Biden China would stay out of the 2024 vote, a promise critics say is simply not true. I'm Kayla Gaskins reporting. Well, over the past couple of mornings, Katie has been going to some school visits and she asked me if we could show this picture. This one's from yesterday. She went to elite education preschool. She said it was a great group of kids that she was speaking to there, teaching those youngsters about all the weather things. And uh, I think some of them wanted to try to see themselves on air. This picture is very wide, so everybody is very small right there. So if any of y'all are watching, hopefully you're able to see yourself right there. She said she had a great time out there talking to all y'all yesterday morning. Also, so there was that.
that. That's pretty cool. I want to show you this eclipse as well. A lot of eyes going to be glued to the sky while this eclipse is happening. That black curved line, that is the path of totality. So everybody within that black line is going to see this total solar eclipse. If you're not in the path of that, which is basically everybody else, it's going to be a partial solar eclipse for us. For us here in Middle Tennessee in Nashville, the uh, maximum coverage, which is about 95%, is going to happen at 2.03 p.m. on a Monday afternoon. All of us are basically at 90 or greater percent for the viewing of this uh, solar eclipse. The only thing is with most things you hear 90 or 95 percent and it sounds pretty good. But when we're talking about a total solar eclipse, you really have to be right there in the path of totality to really see this. For us, it could still look cool, but just nothing like what it's going to look like up there in the path of totality. NASCAR drivers in Martinsville over the weekend will tell you what some of those drivers are saying about the challenge tonight in the backstretch. Plus, something to pump you up, some cool ways that schools are making foods more appealing. And almost two-thirds of fourth graders in our country struggle to read at grade level. And that's why Fox 17 and our parent company, Sinclair Broadcasting, are partnering with Riff. Reading is fun. Require car companies to make sure their safety systems worked at night. Women's pain has been normalized for way too long. I'm Jan Jeffcoat. Choose America's News now from the National Desk. Ashley Spring Semi-Annual Sale is going on now. For a limited time, save big on hot buys starting at just $4.99 or get incredibly low monthly payments with 0% interest for 84 months. Shop now, spend less, and get more. Only at Ashley. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Eurostone. All right, they say Rubbin's Racing and uh, the stars of NASCAR will be at the oldest track in the Cup Series this weekend. Heather Williams has a preview of Sunday's race at Martinsville Speedway in Ridgeway, Virginia. Now here's a look at some of the headlines you should be keeping an eye on as NASCAR heads to Martinsville this weekend. Denny Hamlin jumped the restart at Richmond and a lot of fans were not happy about it. But I wanted to know if Hamlin would have done anything different in hindsight on that final restart. No, I wouldn't have because, you know, I was reacting to um, what my competitors were doing, right? They were trying to take the advantage that the leader had by rolling up on them. Um, and so I was trying to negate the what they were doing. Easter racing has not made the splash NASCAR or Fox had hoped. Is it time to give up that experiment? On this particular weekend, we're not having good ratings and we're not having good crowds. Maybe, maybe it's just because people want to spend time with their families instead so of go me, to let race. Let For a second straight week, we are on the short track in Virginia. So what's the key to mastering Martinsville? Martinsville's tough because uh, you never know what's going to happen, right? Uh, you know, Martinsville's always a hectic race. It's, it's super hard to pass and, and everybody's real tight. You can hear more from Josh, Denny, and Chris, as well as my thoughts on Hamlin's overnight spat with SMI President Marcus Smith. On the backstretch, you can find that on Apple Podcasts and on YouTube. On the backstretch, I'm Heather Williams. Heather, thank you. And uh, NASCAR fans, you can catch all the action on the track from Martinsville on Fox Sports 1. That's FS1 Sunday afternoon at 2. And we have showers and thunderstorms as we head on into next week. We'll break it all down and what you can expect coming up here in just a bit. Also, we had homemade pasta noodles from the lunch lady. How some schools are able to offer these healthier local heroes with Fox 17 News Hometown Heroes. Sponsored by Ponce Law. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Eurostone. In health news tonight, schools are the main source of food for a lot of students in Tennessee and around the country. As Fox 17 News' Barbara Morse shows us tonight, that's why the U.S. Department of Agriculture is offering millions of school districts millions of dollars nationwide to focus more on nutritious options. Here at this Rhode Island Middle School, eating lunch is becoming a sort of gourmet affair. In the past month, we've added local beef, local pork, shell eggs, and now today, um, local chicken being cooked in a rotisserie. Catching those juices in this brand new rotisserie, butternut squash and potatoes, and there's more. The pasta is made 
from scratch. So we, part of this grant, we also got a pasta extruder so we can now make pasta from scratch. There's a cold bar chock full of fruits and veggies and you can even take a whirl on a smoothie making bike. Eighth grader Olivia Kelly did. It's really good. And you got to mix it. Yeah, I know. And I got to ring the bell. This just one example of how federal money is being used to make school lunches more fun and healthy. In collaboration with the USDA, Action for Healthy Kids has given near, nearly $30 million to 264 school districts nationwide through the Healthy Meals Incentives Initiative. That includes making foods lower in salt and sugar. Studies have shown time and time again that improving nutrition in school meals leads to better outcomes in students' academic performance and psychological social functioning. Here, what's going on in the cafeteria is spilling over into the classroom. So kids making healthy choices when it comes to nutrition, we know that that will benefit them both personally and academically. There's a special emphasis by the USDA to provide grants to rural and underserved school districts, introducing them to not just new healthy foods, but those that are produced locally. I'm medical reporter Barbara Morse. Looking ahead to Sunday morning in Nashville in focus now, topics for our panel include the state bill calling for the creation of the East Bank Development Authority. Members of this authority would be appointed by Nashville's mayor and they would oversee the 500 plus acres downtown along the river on the east side on both sides of the new Titan Stadium. Some of the original Senate sponsors have withdrawn their support, which could signal this bill might be in trouble. This is the biggest overreach of government that I've ever seen since 1963 when Metro was formed. Uh, the Gulch developed without some kind of authority. Sobro developed. It took a with, long time. It did, but I mean, Sobro developed without an authority. You can hear more of this discussion on uh, this and other topics on Nashville in Focus Sunday morning, 630 right here on Fox17.com. And of course, are on Fox17 and we'll have it online at Fox17.com after that. Brett, we'll get it out. Yeah, that's right. Man, it was, I was struggling yesterday. Hopefully my voice will hold up a little bit better for today. Here we go. Frost advisories. Though. That's going to be the big story for us for the rest of tonight. We have frost advisories in effect for all of Middle Tennessee and into Southern Kentucky, too. It is going to be a chilly night for us. So if you have any sort of sensitive outdoor plants that you recently put out there, just go ahead and cover them up before you go to bed tonight just to be on the safe side, even if you don't get any frost. But I think there is a chance that we could get some. So that's why these frost advisories are up. Temperatures falling down to about between 31 and 36 degrees. So it will be a cold night for us. Not not going to have to deal with any sort of bad weather though. 47 our current temperature right here in Nashville. Here's a pretty large crowd out there on Broadway this Friday night. Overall, the weather, even though it's cold, not too bad. Rain not anywhere too close to us. That's way up to the north and west of, or the north and east of here. Zooming in on the southern Kentucky and middle Tennessee. Overall, we are still pretty dry. No rain for us right now, and that's how we're going to stay for the rest of the night too. Tomorrow shaping up to be a better day. Today was chilly. We had a high temperature of only 51 degrees right here in Nashville. Typically, we're near 70, so way below normal for this time of year today. Tomorrow morning, we're off to a dry start. We're going to warm up as the day goes on. Keep tomorrow with plenty of sunshine, too. And then on Sunday, we're going to start out dry, but we do bring in a better chance for some showers. A few thunderstorms are going to be possible for us once we hit Sunday afternoon. That's the noon picture right here on Sunday afternoon. Those storms are going to start to move in from the west. They're going to keep on sliding to the east throughout the rest of the day. Some of those might try to get strong, one or two of them. Overall, they're not expecting any sort of severe weather really. Maybe just a storm that does try to briefly get strong. No tornado threat for Sunday. We could though see one or two of those storms try to produce some strong winds. Overall, they're not really going to have to deal with anything too bad with that rain moving through on Sunday. For Monday, we do have a chance for some showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms as well. This is going to be more isolated activity, but then by the time we hit Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we'll see some more widespread activity begin to move across Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. The good news with these rounds of rain for Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, still not really expecting much of any sort of severe weather threat. I think that's still going to say to the southwest of here. So that's the Monday outlook for the Tuesday outlook still to the southwest of here as well. And then by Wednesday, it's going to creep a little bit further to the east, but I still think the bulk of the better ingredients are going to stay to the south and west of us. Tonight's a cold one. Frost advisories are in place. 36 degrees, your low temperature tonight here in Nashville. And then we're back up to the 70s starting on Sunday, mid 70s Sunday and Monday, lower 70s on Tuesday. Wednesday, we're in the mid 70s again, and then lower 70s return for Thursday and Friday. Just add a Fox 17 News recall alert why you need to toss out some popular. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by 
Eurostone. Fox 17 News Farrier Files is sponsored by Bart Durham Injury Law. Fox 17 recall alert tonight involving packets of a popular laundry detergent. Here's what we know. This recall involves Tide Gain Flings Ace and Aerial Liquid Laundry Detergent pod packets made between last September and February of this year. Safety experts say these pods pose a risk of accidental ingestion by young children and could also cause some facial injuries. They were sold in flexible film bags at Big Lots, Family Dollar, Target, Walmart, and on Amazon. All right, get this. If you're sharing a Disney Plus password with friends and relatives, your days may be numbered. Disney's watching and uh, they're ready to make you pay up. The streaming platform says that users will have to start paying an additional fee in June for anybody outside the immediate household. That uh, is, if they're not in your house, don't do it. Company says uh, people who they suspect of using someone else's account will be gently prompted to create their own account so they can log in and continue to watch shows. Just ahead, first world problems, the challenge for 99 cent stores and what the owner is doing about it. Also ahead, something to cheer about, the latest economic win for President Biden. $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. You can always discover more ways to save big every day. Kroger, fresh for everyone. In business news tonight, a popular discount chain is going out of business for good. The operators of 99 cent only stores announced with this week that they are shutting down nationwide. This chain operates nearly 400 stores in California, Texas, Arizona and Nevada. Company leaders cite rising costs and shrinkage from both theft and errors. The company's hired financial services company Hillco Global to liquidate all of its merchandise and the other assets at its stores. In the economy tonight, President Biden is touting numbers from a jobs report that came out today, and it's good news. The U.S. economy adding 303,000 jobs last month, well above projections. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, unemployment fell to 3.8 percent nationwide. He says uh, the country has added 15 million jobs during his administration, the president that is. The labor market has remained resilient in spite of higher interest rates and inflation, adding jobs for 39 consecutive months. The unemployment rate also has been below 4% now for more than two years. The aftershocks keep coming after a 4.8 magnitude earthquake rocked the tri-state area. I'm Connor Hansen in New York with the details. It is a rare complication that can happen after delivery. I'm Liz Bonus. Meet the team that saved this mom. It is just ahead. This is Fox 17 News at 10, your code red station. It's embarrassing, it's offensive, and it's disrespectful to public schools across the state of Tennessee. Tonight in Crisis in the Classroom, State Education Commissioner Lizette Reynolds admits to receiving a college tuition waiver she didn't qualify for. You have to be a state employee for six months to get it, and she had not been on the payroll that long when she took it. Box 17 News' Caitlin Miller now live at the state capitol with more on what the commissioner's office is calling an administrative error. Scott, some people are outraged because they say that Commissioner Reynolds is not even qualified for the position under state law, and now they say she's taking money from the state that she's not eligible for. Now, we spoke with Representative John Ray Clemens, who says that she's not qualified for this position, and he says one of the biggest reasons is she's not qualified to teach in Tennessee. Fox 17 News reached out to Commissioner Reynolds to get her side on this matter, but she has not responded yet. Fox 17 News then reached out to the Tennessee Department of Education and they claim it was an administrative error and Commissioner Reynolds personally covered the cost of all the classes upon realizing this mistake. There's no business being Commissioner of Education in Tennessee and this is an embarrassment to every 
school district, every teacher, and every student in Tennessee that she continues to be our Commissioner of Education. On the public higher education fee waiver, you can see Commissioner Reynolds sign this document on, on August 11th of 2023. Now, the Tennessee Department of Education says that Commissioner Reynolds wants to focus on moving forward and focus on her work within the department. But others are saying that the Attorney General should prosecute her for this. Reporting live from the state capitol, I'm Caitlin Miller, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. In Operation Crime and Justice, the parents of a Belmont University student killed by a stray bullet last fall are seeking justice for their daughter. The mentally ill man, Metro Police say pulled the trigger, is scheduled for a competency hearing here in Nashville next month. Last April, Shaquille Taylor was charged in another case with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, but he was released from custody after doctors concluded he was incompetent to stand trial couldn't help his lawyers. Well, Taylor also failed to meet the standards for involuntary commitment, so they set him free. Jillian Ludwig's parents, parents are hoping that Taylor is found competent so he can be tried for Jillian's murder. We've learned a lot about this man and it seems that in, in many other respects of his daily life, he's competent to have a job, have a girlfriend, have an apartment, you know, drive a car, load a gun, shoot a gun. So it seems that he's, you know, incompetent when he's, you know, um, you know, in trouble. A law that would close the loopholes we outlined, the ones that put Shaquille Taylor back on the street here in town, is now moving forward in the legislature at the moment. It is included in the governor's budget, which is scheduled for a vote in the House on April 15th. We'll keep you posted. New tonight, Metro Councilwoman Courtney Johnston is running for Congress. She is challenging Andy in the 5th District Republican primary in August. In a statement she put out today, Johnston says that she will bring real effective conservative leadership to the role. Her campaign will officially kick off later this month. Brett? Scott, it's going to be a cold one for us for tonight. National Weather Service has issued frost advisories that are in effect for all the viewing area. Everybody in Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky included in that shade of blue. That is that frost advisory. That's going to be for tomorrow morning. Some of those do have different run times. Some of those ones up in Southern Kentucky kick in a little bit earlier. But for all these in Middle Tennessee, they're going to go from 4 a.m. tomorrow morning until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. But all of them are for tomorrow morning. Temperature Falling as low as 31 to 36 degrees, depending on where you're at. No bad weather tonight, fortunately. Just chilly, but not slowing anybody down from being out there on Broadway on this Friday night. Still a good crowd out there. 47 degrees. That's our current temperature right here in Nashville. As far as any rain goes, really not seeing any of that anywhere too close to us. It is still all dry for us right here. Southern Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, no green popping up right there onto the radar. And that's how we're going to stay through the rest of the night, too. Not expecting any rainfall tomorrow. We should be dry as well with plenty of sun. Shine. We're in the 40s right now for most areas. Lower 40s in Crossville, 41 there, 42 Cookville, Tullahoma, a little lower, 39 degrees. That's our current temperature down there in Tullahoma. And then we have some mid 40s out west, 46 up in Paris and in Camden. So a cold night ahead. That's going to be the story for us for the rest of the night. That frost advisory is in effect. So if you have any plants outside, you might think need a little help uh, from it, this frost. Go ahead and just cover those up before you go to bed tonight. Better safe than sorry on that. Showers and thunderstorms are going to increase for us as we head on into the middle of this upcoming week. We'll also be talking about your eclipse viewing. That's on Monday. All those details coming up in just a bit. Sunday on full measure here on Fox 17. New government estimates on how many people are still suffering the effects of COVID-19. Chances are good you know someone that uh, fits into this category. A National Institutes of Health study says as many as one in four American adults who had the virus is dealing with long COVID. Yet many doctors aren't getting the latest science they say for diagnosis and treatment. Two doctors who deal with thousands of people who have long haul COVID say they are learning new information information daily. Describe what you see happening to people. What is happening to patients? So in many ways, I mean, it is uh, very young people that were otherwise athletic and, and living their life in, in basically every way you would think of fit, you know, 20 to 40 year old would do. And then they are go from that to being debilitated. And then on top of that, as, as Pierre say, I mean, the kind of increase in the type of cancer diagnosis that I even have in my you know, primary care practice to neurological diseases that I never thought would happen to things like systemic amyloidosis that I would have never you know, seen in some of these patients or may have seen in once in a lifetime. 
Cheryl Ackeson examines the latest research on perplexing illnesses stemming from COVID-19 and the vaccines on full measure Sunday morning, 730 here on Fox 17. Say Fox 17 News, your code red station. Alerts, empowers, protects. This Fox 17 This Morning newscast is sponsored by Xander Insurance. Politics tonight, President Biden feeling the heat for pressuring Israel for a ceasefire in Gaza. That pressure increased of late after a botched Israeli bombing raid killed aid workers. As Fox News' Lucas Tomlinson shows us tonight, Mr. Biden was asked about this during his visit today to the site of the Baltimore Bridge collapse. President Biden insists the U.S. stands with Israel, even as critics claim the White House is undermining its closest ally in the Middle East. And as more Democrats call on the White House to put conditions on U.S. aid. Israel today announcing findings from its investigation into a drone strike Monday night that killed seven aid workers, including an American, with World Central Kitchen. Writing it was, quote, a grave mistake stemming from a serious failure due to a mistaken identification, errors in decision making, and an attack contrary to standard operating procedures. The Israeli military fired two officers and punished three others for the botched strike. U.S. officials insist more must be done to protect those caught in the crossfire. As Israel pursues any military operations against Hamas, it has to prioritize the protection of civilians. It has to make that job number one. During the American withdrawal from Afghanistan, the Pentagon declined to punish anyone involved in a drone strike that killed 10 Afghans, including seven children. White House spokesman John Kirby was asked about the comparison. These are events that happened three years apart, two different uh, geographic locations, two different countries, two different sets of circumstances. There was no need for personal accountability to be had, but did find that the U.S. military needed to make some systemic changes. Sunday marks six months since the Hamas massacre. On Monday, family members of some of the American hostages will meet with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan at the White House. In Baltimore today, President Biden met the family members of the six men killed when the Key Bridge collapsed. Biden pledged the full support of the federal government to help Baltimore rebuild. And by the end of May, we'll open the full channel. At the White House, Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. Continuing coverage tonight as the state of Ohio prepares to welcome tens of thousands of visitors ahead of Monday's total solar eclipse. Governor Mike DeWine says his state has been working with other states, including ours, Tennessee and Kentucky, which experienced the last total eclipse in the U.S. back in 2017. He says local leaders there are taking steps to prepare for the traffic congestion and ease it. Plans are also in place, he says, to support first responders in the most crowded communities if the worst should happen. DeWine is urging Ohio residents and visitors to be patient. And I think the two dangers that people need to worry about particularly are traffic related. Uh, again, people are going to be patient, take their time uh, and expect, you know, very, very heavy, heavy traffic. Uh, they're saying the same thing north of here in Kentucky. DeWine says a second area of concern, making sure folks are wearing eclipse glasses or other proper eye protection. Ohio, get this, they have not seen a total solar eclipse since 1806. On Monday, be sure to check out Fox17.com for our 30-minute solar eclipse special. Starts at 145, runs to 215. That's a time you'll see action in our area. Fox17's uh, Chief Code Red Meteorologist Katie Morgan is going to be on the road in the path of totality, sharing cool science facts from Marion, Illinois. And you can see total coverage of this eclipse online from Texas all the way to the northeast in Maine at Fox17.com from noon until 3. I'm Janae Bones in Washington with a look at sexual assaults in the U.S. You won't find that anywhere else. Make your outdoor space better than ever at B.F. Myers Furniture. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Tennessee Home Buyers. Apple has laid off more than 600 workers about a month after it ended its self-driving car project. A notice sent to the state of California doesn't say which projects the employees were working on. They are being laid off across eight offices in Santa Clara. A little showbiz. 
After canceling seven dates of her first North American tour in five years amid weak ticket sales, Jennifer Lopez has changed the name of the tour from This Is Me Now to This Is Me Live, The Greatest Hits. The tour was designed to coincide with the February release of her latest album. It sold just 14,000 copies in its first week while charting at number 38 on Billboard's Top 200. There's been no comment on the rebranding of the tour from the Lopez camp. And April is National Grilled Cheese Month. The Pepperidge Farm survey shows the average American eats a whopping 36 grilled cheese sandwiches a year. White bread is America's top choice. Butter eclipses mayo as the go-to outside the bread spread. And the preferred grilled cheese cooking vessel, frying pans. That's business in New York. C.J. Papa, Fox News. In Operation Crime and Justice, someone is sexually assaulted in this country every 68 seconds, uh, just a little over a minute. Fox 17 News' Janae Bowen is now sharing some ways to protect yourself against this horrific crime. Leo Forney's life is forever changed by a moment back in 2013. He proceeded to grab me and rape me in my living room. And so what lasted felt like an attorney lasted a few minutes of my life that I can never get back. She has turned her pain into purpose. She now runs a nonprofit organization called Save Me, which stands for sexual assault advocacy for victims everywhere. We have support groups, we have community. We're working on survivor stories in the form of documentaries and short films. It appears her efforts and those of others are helping. According to the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network, sexual violence has fallen by half in the last 20 years. Even still, millions of Americans have experienced sexual violence. So we really see that compounding with things like deep fake pornography, with things like sexting, sextortion, a revenge porn. Nurse practitioner Jessica Peck says abuse that used to happen only in person is now amplified digitally. And young people are prime targets, with more than four in five female rape survivors reported that they were first raped before age 25, and almost half were first raped as a minor. Believe kids when they tell you something happened, or if they tell you that their spidey sense is off. Peck also says parents need to accept that sexual assault can happen to anyone, and they must talk to their children. And Forney is calling for more education, more funding for support services, and stronger laws around sexual assault. And if you've experienced it, she has this message for you. It wasn't your fault. Be patient with yourself. Give yourself grace. If you need support, information, advice, or a referral, please call the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE. I'm Janae Bowens reporting. <laughs> New tonight, the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere reaching historic highs. Now, this is according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. In 2023, carbon dioxide rose by the third highest amount in 65 years of record keeping. Methane levels up 3%, they say, in the past five years. Experts estimate methane is responsible for about 30% of the current rise in global temperatures. Carbon dioxide, they say, to blame for twice that much. Brett? Scott, it's going to be a cold night for us tonight. We do have these frost advisories. I've been showing this map all night long. This is the big story for us for tonight. It's going to get chilly. Low temperatures falling down to about 31 to 36 degrees, depending on where you're at. And because of that, the National Weather Service has gone ahead and put up frost advisories for everybody here in our viewing area. Uh, so if you have any of that sensitive outdoor vegetation you want to keep alive that may be new, just go ahead and cover that up before you go to bed tonight. Play it safe. Be a be Better to be safe than sorry for tonight with that chance for the frost. 47 degrees, that's our current temperature right here in Nashville. Here's your live look over Broadway. Still a decent crowd out there on Broadway tonight. We are dry right now, not seeing any sort of rain for us, and I think we're going to keep it dry for the rest of the night. Really no rain chance for any of us. Here's a zoomed in view. Southern Kentucky, Middle Tennessee showing all dry conditions for us right now. As we go through the rest of tonight, again, dry. We're going to stay dry tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine for us tomorrow. We're also going to warm up a little bit 
bit better too for tomorrow. Today was kind of chilly. It stayed cloudy too. T uh, high temperatures today were held well below normal for this time of year. As far as any rain goes on Sunday, we started out dry, but then by Sunday afternoon, we'll bring in a better chance for some of these isolated showers and thunderstorms. Not expecting a whole lot on a Sunday. Not really much of a severe weather threat. However, a couple of storms could try to get strong, but I think most of this is really not going to be anything to worry about too much right now. About half of us included in that shade of green. That's that level one risk from the Storm Prediction Center. We could see a couple of those storms get kind of strong with some strong winds. No tornado threat. It doesn't look like though for Sunday, so that is some good news for us. As we head on into Monday, some isolated showers, maybe a couple of storms possible. This is the day of the eclipse. Maximum coverage for us here in Nashville. It's going to be about 95% at 2:03 p.m. Monday afternoon, and this model is still keeping some of those clouds with us. We could see a few breaks in the clouds up near the Tennessee River, but overall, I do uh, think that cloud cover is going to kind of be there with us during that eclipse. Hopefully, it'll clear on out though the closer that we get. Tuesday, 7 o'clock in the morning, widespread showers and maybe some thunderstorms too. A similar setup for us as we head on into Wednesday. We'll keep a decent chance for showers and maybe a few storms in place for Wednesday. Wednesday and then Thursday is basically just going to be another repeat of that Friday. Another rain chance, but that rain chance does start to drop down a little bit lower for us. Here's a severe weather outlook. This is for Monday. It's going to stay down to the south and west of here. Not really going to have to worry about much of that for Monday. Tuesday, I think it's still going to stay to the south as well. It, dry, it shifts a little bit further to the east on Wednesday, but I still think that severe threat is going to stay low for us on Wednesday. Probably not going to have to worry about much of that. 75 on Sunday, 76 on Monday, and we'll stay in the 70s as we head through the rest of this upcoming week. The aftershocks keep coming after a four... Sunday at 3 on Fox 17. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by the Nashville Predators. In national news, no injuries or serious damage is reported in the Northeast today following a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Connor Hansen in New York now where people could feel the ground shake. People here in the studio in Manhattan and all over the tri-state area and as far away as Baltimore and Philadelphia felt the quake. So far, we have not heard of any injuries or serious damage. Videos captured the earthquake knocking pictures off of walls and startling pets. Officials believe the epicenter of the 4.8 magnitude earthquake was near Lebanon, New Jersey. It's the first time a tremor with that strength has hit the tri-state area in more than a century. It felt like the pavement was giving way under me and I didn't know what to think or what to do. The epicenter was about an hour's drive from New York City. Earth Camp footage captured Lady Liberty shaking. The quake rattled a United Nations meeting and tourists in Times Square were taken by surprise. Right under our feet, we felt the shaking. We was just nervous, like, what's going on? Because, you know, we haven't heard, we haven't had an earthquake in so long. New York City officials say they're checking buildings and infrastructure for any damage. Tunnels are very resilient for seismic impacts, so they move with the ground. Um, so again, we, it's a hands-on inspection. We go and do visual inspection to see if there are any, any damages. Geophysicists say fault lines run through New York, but right now, there's no reason to worry. I believe authorities are in the scene. They are examining the, the, the situation, and all of the scientists are closely working with them to gather any information that, uh, that's needed to, to make any further decisions. Officials are warning that aftershocks could continue over the next week or so. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Well, what do you think? Tonight, uh, Fox 17 on our X poll asked whether you have ever experienced an earthquake and 561 people weighed in and looks like that we're almost evenly divided. 50.1% say yes, we have felt the earth shake personally. 49.9% say no. Our thanks to all who took time to weigh in. It is a rare complication that can happen after delivery. I'm Liz Bonus. Meet the team that saved the percent off slam dunk deals and up to 40% off store wide. Don't miss it. Sale ends Sunday. Electronic Express. We make it happen. In health news tonight, a rare condition that doctors see about once for every 40,000 births worldwide. One mom who survived it is now thanking members of the medical team that saved her life. Fox 17 medical reporter Liz Bonus shares her story. 
Hey there, everybody. Hello to you. Little Parker, who you see here, is now six weeks old. But right after this healthy little boy was born, mom had a rare complication that left her critical care team with one mission, saving mom. I had a very normal, healthy pregnancy. And um, the next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital and was on life support. Days later, Ashley woke up. Her body weak due to a condition responsible for as many as one in 10 deaths in a mom after delivery. Somehow, amniotic fluid got into Ashley's bloodstream, causing what's called an AFE. Yeah, Ashley had an amniotic fluid embolism, and that set off a cytokine response, a big inflammatory response in her body, and she went into biventricular failure. So both sides of her heart failed. She had severe lung failure as well, and then multi-system organ failure and required ECMO support. ECMO uses this machine. It stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Dr. Catherine O'Keefe and Dr. Doug Adams were part of Ashley's critical care team. They opened her chest and connected her to the ECMO. ECMO supports the heart and lungs in a situation where the body can't do that any longer, and that was the situation. The heart and lungs were failing uh, due to the process that had gone in the, in the course of the birth. Remarkably, Ashley's OBGYN, Dr. Lindsay Crawford, said the ECMO provided enough supportive care that Ashley's body began to heal on its own. It is ensuring that you give the body time to recover from that huge cytokine response that occurs to allow the lungs and the heart to take a break. Ashley's husband, Alex, says seeing Parker healthy and Ashley come back to good health is like a double miracle in his life. Definitely uh, two miracles. It's a blessing to have both of them. And to the team that recognized the AFE and acted immediately, Ashley and her family could not be more grateful. I wanted to be a mom so bad, so I was really excited that I got to be here to be a wife mm -hmm. and a mom. Now, Ashley's team says even though this is a rare event, it's always okay to ask where you are delivering, what's available, should you need this kind of critical care? But also, they say, make sure you tell a team member right away if something doesn't feel quite right. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. Liz, thank you. Well, tonight, as we head into the weekend, we are, I guess, prepared to throw another blanket on the bed. Yeah, Scott, tonight's going to be another cold one. Frost advisory is in effect for basically all of us for tomorrow morning. 63, though, we warm up. That's the high temperature for us later on in the day tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine, mid-70s return for us on Sunday. And then as we head